Stevie here. I'm at the Grove a little early here. Um, about to go to the Barnes and Nobles for uh, Dante Ross's Son of the City book signing or Q&A with Be Real. So I still got some time, um, 30 minutes, and I've always wanted this uh, MP empanada because there's always a line and uh maybe i'll check one out maybe get an empanada empanada before the book signing um there's uh that um yeah here we go empanada Oh, should I get the carne asada? Sorry. Hi. Which one is the, the good one? The beef. That's our number one. What about the carne asada? That one's good too. If you like spicy. Yeah, let me get a... But the beef is the best seller? That's our number one. That's, that's, that's your number one. one. All right, let me just get one. The beef? Yeah, the one beef. Thank you. You're welcome. Cash or card? I got card. So here's the empanada, and uh, let me get a quick, quick bite to give you my immediate reaction to their best seller. Not bad at all. Get your empanada today at the Grove. So we're here at the um what's your name buddy? Sam. Sam. What's up? What's up? Can I can what's I up? can I get some? And we're here for the uh well, how'd you hear about the book sign here and then how how'd you hear about Dante? I'm like uh I work in the music industry, so I so I know Dante. I mean like I not know. So so you, but you know his I'm work and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um and are, um, are you testing, aware testing, of um, just testing, like all the, the, a lot of the artists that he's discovered? Yeah. Testing, and what's some exactly. of the artists testing, that stand testing. out? Well, I, you know, call me on my bullshit, but I don't know all of the artists he discovered. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But but he he's uh, from New York. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know he worked at uh, ADA for a while. Test, 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 you know. test, test, test. He he discovered I mean, like um, well he worked with leaders of the new school. Yeah. And like Dow hieroglyphics and, and, and people like that. But it's okay. So but you're a fan of Scissor Bros, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I'm a uh, comedy fan. Oh, you are? Yeah, I'm a comedy fan. I was at the store last night. Okay. So what's your favorite episode of Scissor Bros? Okay. Don't. Wait. Wait. What do you mean? Listen, I'm. Okay, okay. Oh, but but you like us. I like you. Okay, listen, get get, listen. get your get your get your book today, <laughs> yeah. Son of the City, baby, Dante Rock. Um, and then, do you think it's gonna be packed today? Yeah, it's sold out. It's sold out. It's sold okay, out. cool. So, do you think he'll sign it at the end, Son of the City? It should already. Be. Oh, then yeah, probably. Yeah, and we're at Barnes and Nobles, right? Barnes yeah, and Nobles, Barnes at the Grove. <laughs> yeah, dude, can't get more street than that. All right, till next. Do you think they'll let us vlog this or no? Probably. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> no, we can do better than that. We're going to the library. We can make noise. Here we go. We have a couple of very special guests today, and I'm going to do a quick intro, and I'm going to let them do their thing because we're not here for me. Dante Ross is an American music industry executive, artist and repertoire representative, and record producer. He was named one of the top 25 greatest a and representatives in hip hop by Complex Magazine. That is pretty amazing. Be Real is an American rapper. Since 1991, he has been one of the two lead rappers in the hip hop group Cypress Hill, along with Send Dog. He was also a part of the rap metal band Kush. Is it Kush? Kush. <laughs> the hip hop supergroup Zero Killers and the rap rock supergroup Prophets of Rage. Today they join us to discuss Son of the City, a highly entertaining memoir that dives deep into Dante's childhood, his life in hip hop, and all the hard lessons he learned growing up in New York as a true son of the city. Please give it up for Dante Ross. How you doing?
thank you because um, two things. One, you're my friend forever and a day. And Cypress Hill finally followed me on Twitter after knowing me for three years. <laughs> Today, I, I did I that. Like, I feel like I made the, I made the big time. <laughs> I want to start off by saying congratulations. Um, we've you. known each other for a long time, and it's great to see this happen because, you know, we started off early in the game, and to see someone telling their journey, you know, navigating through, you know, the the ever evolving person known as Dante Ross, um, it, it's a great story, you Thank know, you, and and I'm glad you're telling it. Thanks, man. I mean, it's um, goddamn. I known you when your name was Louis. And you weren't in Cypress Hill yet. And um, Jesus Christ, just to see all the iterations of you is, is uh, super incredible. And I've been a big fan forever. So it's an honor. And, and B is also my friend who makes fun of me all the time. So, so, so that's good, too. So um, I don't know. What, should we talk about the book? I, don't, I read from the book in New York, and I didn't think it went that well. So I don't think I want to read from the book. Um, so, so I think we'll just talk shit instead. It's a, more, be more entertaining. Well, it's, it started off as a collaborative um, endeavor with your father, yep. right? Yep. And unfortunately, before you, you got on the journey, he passed. Yep. So this is like a tribute to him yep. in telling your journey. And I got to say, you know, like from, the, from what I've read and, um, you know, going through your childhood and bouncing back and forth from New York to California to humble County of all places, good place yeah, to be. Weird fucking place for me. To um, <laughs> the the quality time with your father allowed you to be open and to go on this journey and to not like box yourself in or foothold yourself to anything. And I think that was very key. You know that that time with your father, when you come from broken or fractured family. You don't necessarily get that time. And I feel like in, in some of the writing, it said you needed that. For sure. I mean, I needed to know there was a life outside of New York. You know, I just grew up on the Lower East Side, and I didn't know the whole world wasn't fucking crazy. And, um, and, and my dad was crazy, don't get me wrong. But he lived in California, and he lived up in Humboldt and in San Francisco. So I got to spend a lot of time in a place that was completely different than New York and expanded my horizons. I've always been pretty open-minded. and it kind of made me look at life a little differently. I realized that New York wasn't always the be end all of everything. And um, there was a world much bigger than just the neighborhood I lived in, which was, which was crazy, because where I grew up, like, you know, people are always trying to take your shit. And you go to Humboldt County, no one's trying to take your shit. Um, you know, everyone's maybe trying to give you stuff. So, um, you know, like it's totally different, like mind uh, expanding kind of experience. You know, I felt like you know, in, in the journey, trying to find yourself, yeah. right? As as we all do as young men getting into the trouble. And, and I never got in trouble. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. But getting exposed to the things that, you know, our, our parents try to keep us from. And when you, when you come from a broken household, you know, the streets are calling to you more than, more than anything. And you're adventuring to that. And some of the characters that sort of helped you evolve into the, the, natural a and r that you became you know like exposing you to all this different music i mean i i you know like a pretty open-minded kid and i grew up like in a pretty wild neighborhood but my neighborhood was like almost all entirely puerto rican and then the punk rockers showed up right so i got to see kind of punk rock come to life around me if you will and by the time i was 14 or so 14 15 i discovered bands like the specials and the clash and I saw this whole world that wasn't just my neighborhood, and I could literally skateboard over a couple of blocks and get out of the mayhem of my street, my block. Um, and I was one of those kids who was outside his whole life because I didn't like being inside because my house was fucked up, so I wanted to be outside. And I kind of, um, you know, I was raised by kind of the things around me, whether it was my friends in the Bad Brains who, who kind of befriended me as a child or, you know, um, hanging out with the Beasties and, and people like that, I kind of, learned a, a whole lot more about life than just my obvious existence and was exposed to a lot of music. As a kid, I figured out how to get into every nightclub for free, and that's like the secret to being an A&R guy. So I saw every band ever. I wish I knew that trick, because like, you know, I had to have friends at the door, like my friend Esteban Orio back there. Esteban, what up? He used to let me in the clubs, but like, that you know. 
I didn't get into that many, but <laughs> <laughs> not, unless he was at the door. But you know, the the other the other thing is is that I saw that was on your mind a lot was the the fact that there was no stability yet. Mm -hmm. You know, every every time you bounced around, there was always this thing in in the back of your mind like. What are we gonna fucking do? Like, when's, what, it, when's it gonna fucking go shitty again? Yeah, and it seemed like that was always the push, always the drive, and and it, and it was it was cool as your friend learning about the punk rock connection because like when when we met, you were already past that into I, I was already gold train. Yeah, always <laughs> already into the hip hop aspect of it, but a lot of people don't know. Uh, Punk rock connected with hip hop. Oh yeah, in those days, like in the early yeah early in, the, days. in the early eighties, I think the first like white people to embrace hip hop were all downtown kind of punk rock, new wave, trendy people. Um, and we kind of like, it was the new thing, you know, it was cool to us. And I would say like, it was kind of unfair cause like as a white kid, you could not dress like Rick James or George Clinton. You got laughed at. Like if I had leather pants and nine belts, but like that shit was always cool when Rick James did it, right? And when we were punk rock guys, we were like, oh, I really like The Clash, but Rick James is fucking cool too. So, you know, it was, um, it's two sets of rules, and um, those cultures where I lived were side by side. We went to the club and we heard New Wave and punk rock records, and then we heard Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, I mean, it, it it was sort of similar here, but like I'll tell you what, when when you know your 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 realization when r listening to those Run DMC songs that flip that flipped your whole yeah. that flipped your world from you know punk rock to hip hop. That was the same thing that happened with yeah, me. Yeah, me and you were talking about that like a couple of months ago. Yeah, because I was into metal and and oldies and and different things, you know. Because I think and what was dope, what's dope about the book, is how you put the playlist of what you were listening to in the evolution of Dante. Right, right. You know, and and it was like wide open. There wasn't any one thing you were leaning on more than the other. But what was dope was the punk rock connection into now this Run DMC, Man. this phenomenon. And Run DMC, like, I don't know, most of you, some people are as old as me and B, I'm, no one's as old as me, I've come to realize. <laughs> um, but, but um, man, like Run DMC, were, when, when I first heard them, like I liked rap music, right? But rap music was getting like musical. It was kind of like, A lot you know, of disco breaks. Yeah, and, and the keyboards, you know, yeah. did it, did it, did it, it's like, you know, yeah. it's like kind of like happy. And, yeah, very and, bright. Yeah, exactly, and kind of R&B-ish, and then, Run DMC comes out and they, they're like anti-music. It's like, just drums and like a scratch and they're like yelling at you. And I was like, this shit is like punk rock, me and my friends. And, yeah. and it spoke to us. We were like, I was into rap music, but when her Run DMC, it became a lifestyle for me, right? I was like, oh shit. And they dress like the audience. Or like Grandmaster Flash with like a broke Rick James, who I keep talking about for some reason. <laughs> and um, he was pretty dope, Rick James. And, and um, Run DMC didn't. They dressed like the guys who might beat you up on the train, right? And you were like, oh shit, these guys are fucking dangerous. It was cool. They, they flipped it back to the street because it's right. like you were said, all, it's like you were saying, all the artists before them, the generation before them, they were trying to emulate like all the funk bands right. with the leather fringe and all that stuff. And here these guys come, which was considered thugged out at the time. It was thugged out. And <laughs> that just, it flipped the game on its head. I mean, I had a leather blazer, you know, I had to yeah. go get one. I was like, I had my Adidas, my shell toes. It was like, you know, we all, we had our, we wanted to dress like that. We were a little too soft to quite dress like that, but. That we had ever seen mosh pits or stage diving or crowd surfing, people were jumping off the balcony. And that was to our shit. Like, we didn't expect it. We're like going to open for the Beastie Boys and it was just a wild fucking show. And that was a weird moment for them because that's right when Check Your Head's coming out. And yeah. they're coming off like a flop, kind of. Yeah. And I remember the show was Paul's Boutique, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I remember it's um, Beasties, Luscious Jackson, and Cypress Hill. Yeah, that's a weird ass bill, right? And I'll, and I'll tell you, you know, like the the friendship that we created from it, you know, allowed us to eventually take a slot on the so the the Check Your Head tour. Yeah, which which was crazy, and, and you know who knew who knew that? I mean, it we all didn't make, know that you were running with them. I mean, it all makes sense though um, yeah. when I think about it, because it's like rap. The rap world was like this big back then. Yeah, you know, it was small, so everyone kind of knew each other. Like, and when you think about like, Cypress Hill music and. 
the beasties and even myself it's kind of all makes sense it's all got kind of a rock and roll mentality to it yeah uh, um, at its core it's kind of punk rock some yeah i mean the beasties yeah their first the first uh entrance in the game was the the cookie puss right the, yeah. that's a, that it's, it's just a trip like because when when we're coming up here on the, the east coast i mean the west coast we don't know that part about the beastie boys we just see these crazy ass white boys rocking right. you know the the hip-hop style and we fell in love with that and uh you know who we did at the time when I, I met you, I didn't know that you had a connection there. And it was just cool to see the different relationships that you had with it, all these it's, guys. It's funny, too, because I remember they took Daylon tour, too, at one point. So they took, um, they also took Tribe on tour later. So they always kind of, we always kind of liked the same stuff and knew all the same people. And I, um, I want to say I might have played Mike D. Cypress Hill, the demos before it came out. I think we were in Long Island one time and I just had it. I, we were like at a summer house and we play. I had the tape and I played it. Cause your tape also, um, Muggs was like, copy that shit and give it to all your friends. And yeah. I copied it and gave it to all my friends. So <laughs> when you guys first played in New York, everyone, I remember the show, everyone knew the fucking words. And you came out, you had the fucking reef thing on, the big weed thing. Yeah, that's right. And all my boys were up front and they were like, ah, oh, they knew all the words. It's kind of crazy. At SOBs, yeah. that was like our first show there. Huh? And uh, we did something different. We we only did it that day. We did the song Pigs, right? And I had the weed yeah. reef or lay, whatever you want to call it. And all of our boys that were with us, we had them put on pig masks, and they were harassing me all through the goddamn song. Uh, it was something else. But I didn't like being pushed around while I was trying to remember verses. So that, that came to an abrupt end real quick. <laughs> Crazy man. I mean, it's a. I marvel at how, man. It, it like. You know, it's funny, like, you think it's so hard to be, like, be successful, but I've seen it happen like a flick of a switch so many times. You know, you don't see the 10,000 hours before that, but watching you guys from when your record came out to when it hit, it was like six months, man. Yeah. In like six months, you guys were, like, famous. It, it didn't feel like six months. It felt, <laughs> lot, it felt a lot longer. So, Stevie here. My review for the night is nothing but positivity. Um, I got to sit down and listen to two OGs in the game, uh, Be Real and Dante Ross. He actually made me feel good because uh, I, I stayed in line to get it signed. And he, he said, um, he spelled my name wrong. Uh, he said, Tu Kwangu, cool name, my guy. And he, he, he mentioned that. Um, when uh when he looked at my name and he he's and that made me feel good um i couldn't get be real's autograph although because it, it was dante's night but uh be real was there the whole time it was basically like a podcast well obviously you, you you've seen the footage but uh um i think i got the most footage out of anybody it was it was sold out but um i got the most footage out of everyone there um and but my arm started hurting i was just like uh and then I could tell people were getting a little annoyed <laughs> because it was a pretty, I, I, you know, it's understandable to get like maybe two minutes tops, but I think I got, I, I think I clocked 12, 12, 13 minutes worth of footage. But uh, get your copy of Dante Ross's Son of the City today. Um, I really had a great time. Be Real was awesome. They talked a lot about, I mean, I, I almost jizzed in my pants. I mean, they were talking about all kinds of stuff that I love. Beastie Boys, Cypress Hill, all that shit they talked about. Get your copy today. And thanks for a uh, comment below. If you like this kind of footage, um, it is, it was like, I guess uh, the first, um, God, I hate this, these little. Bacon fat right here, huh? Um, yeah, it was my first book signing vlog. So thanks for tuning in. Love y'all. Comment below. Share the video. Subscribe today. Love y'all. Peace. So this is uh, Ernie. And he's a full-grown daddy long leg. And uh, I, I raised him when he was little. 
um, and he's grown. I mean, this guy is huge now, and I, I've just uh, I've just let him chill in the bathroom, and uh, this is his hunting ground, and he's obviously uh, been uh, doing good because uh, he 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 runs this whole area. Um, so, oh, sorry, Ernie, watch it there. Um, so that's Ernie, and he was a tiny little guy before, and but uh, as you can see, he's, uh, I mean, he's created these little webs as well. So, uh, hope you're having a good day, buddy. Till next time. Stevie here. Um, it's a bonus uh, dream vlog, and I'm here to tell y'all that there's a, um, a, a dream dimension or maybe it's a dimension when we die but it's a lot more sinister um but uh in this world uh there's uh it's a lot more cutthroat where there's people there's you know it's just like this world you know there's shopping centers cars people you know but um I dreamt like there was a Hunger Games like scenario where I literally um they started me off with like I had like the other dude I think it was my friend Scotty from high school but I had something like I had something like this you know and then he had a freaking machete so it wasn't even fair so um but I thought it was just me against him, but but everybody was involved with it. But you didn't know who, you didn't know who was involved with this Hunger Games, a situation or what what teams or who, who was on what team. So I was a bit confused. I mean, so basically, there was a movie back in the t day called uh, Dawn of the Dead, or Day of the Dead, whatever one was in the shopping mall, where these. Peoples were in the shopping mall, like trying to survive. That's where this Hunger Games was, in the shopping mall. I mean, and it's like every person for themselves. So I was like, I mean, I had this little ass thing, and I'm hiding inside, you know, like a clothing store, like in the racks. Oh, and I and I witnessed some horrific horrific deaths and scenarios i mean this dude came in he looked crazy he had blood all over him and i saw like a lot of like duels i did the coward shit like i was doing some cowardice shit because i because i it was so real i was just trying to survive hold up i'm uploading this this other video i'm at my computer now i i wanted to just survive but i seen these two dudes going at it and one dude got stabbed, like he had a thing he go right through his um his heart, like the spear thing, and he was puking up. Have you seen remember Alien? Um the first original Alien, the Ridley Scott one, where the android was puking out that white shit? Yeah, I seen that. So I um I just want to tell y'all that there there, you know, when you die or when you dream, there there might be a a dimension where um it's like this third dimension but a little maybe it's the fourth dimension i wrote a song about it i mean y'all slept on it but i wrote a song about it um let me hold the um let me grab the record this record back in the day called memories of the void and i love y'all i'm working on my new album peace